Hello again, welcome back everyone, Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me for another one of my spirit review videos. And today we've got a couple of nice ones to taste. It's going to be Jim Beam's Jacob's Ghost Clear Whiskey and Jack Daniel's new Unaged Rye. Notice I didn't say whiskey at the end of this one. Uh, they had a big old to do between the Alcohol Tax and Trade Bureau and Jack Daniels as to whether or not they could put the word whiskey on the label. In the end, the Tax and Trade Bureau said, no, you can't do it. It hasn't spent any time in the woods, so they're like, you can't classify it as, label it as whiskey. Uh, you have to label yourself as a neutral spirit or a neutral grain spirit. Doesn't make sense there because it doesn't fit that category either because those are distilled at 190 or higher in proof. This one was around 140, so it doesn't fit that classification either. So, in the end, they labeled it as a distilled specialty spirit. Would look horrible on the label, so they labeled it as just Jack Daniels Tennessee Rye. And in little letters underneath there, it's uh, spirits distilled from grain. Okay. Now, as far as collectability, this one would be the one to collect between the two. Uh, Jim Beam Jacobs Ghost Rye, it's going to be around probably for a long, long time. This is a one-time only release. Uh, what happened was Jack Daniels wanted to create a brand new rye whiskey, the first time in a hundred year, over a hundred years that they've created a new mash bill. And when they came up with the mash bill, it's actually 70% rye, 18% uh, corn, and 12% malted barley. They really liked it as it was coming off the still. And they decided, you know what, let's do a limited edition run. And that's what we have here. Uh, again, in a few years when that rye whiskey is ready, it would be nice to have a bottle like this to be able to taste, compare, uh, you know, the white dog version of that rye whiskey. <clears throat> so on that standpoint, it may be worth collecting, but the price of this one runs around $40 to $50, so it's pretty high, especially for an unaged spirit. Uh, I found it for $39.99 at Total Wines, best price I've seen so far, so uh, if you're interested, probably look there. Now, Jim Beam's Jacob's Ghost is the exact same uh, bourbon uh, mash bill that they use for the original Jim Beam white label, which is typically aged four years. This one's only aged one year. After that year, they dump the barrels, run it through a filtration process, remove all that color, and proof it down to 80 proof. Both of these are 80 proof. And that's what you have here. It still has a little bit of color, especially when you compare it. You know, it's one's fairly clear, and this one just has a little bit, looks like it has a touch of vanilla in it, as far as the color is concerned. But let's go ahead and get to the actual nosing. I think I gave you the price. It's around $20. All right. You do get a little bit of that, that barrel influence, but it's very, very light. Just a, a hint of oak. Touch of vanilla, touch of caramel. That corn grain is still coming through. But again, it's very muted. Now, the one thing I do notice on the nose on this one is there is some alcohol coming out of this glass. I'm having to back off a little bit. It is fairly warm on the nose. Beyond those, there's a little bit of fruit, but they're so muted, it's really hard to pick them out. I may be able to get a little bit of banana in there and a fair amount of yeast still coming through. All right, on to the Jack Daniels. Well, it's a big difference. Like I said, this is a bourbon recipe. This is a rye whiskey recipe, so they are going to be fairly different. But the alcohol is much lower on the nose on this 80 proof version. It's very floral with a hint of honey and mint in there as well. A nice, uh, the yeast is coming through, but it's feeling more doughy, so like a, a nice doughy yeast roll, maybe. A little bit of fruit in there, as well as like a, like a plum, a very light, It's more of like a raspberry or a plum, red fruit. And I do get a little bit of banana in this one as well. 
no vanilla. You're not going to get the vanilla or oat character that you're finding here. So in that sense, it's just very clean. It's very light, sweet, floral. And uh, again, it's that honey and the, and the dough yeast coming through. Very, very nice on the nose. All right, let's get to the actual tasting. Jacob's goes first. Very soft, muted flavors. Alcohol is kicking up mid palate a little bit. It's getting a little warm, mainly on the back. I'm getting the oak tannins as well, a little more dominating on the mid palate. A little bit of plum, a little bit of raspberry in there, right in the front. But then mid palate, that's where it starts. That oak and the tannins, are, even though it's just only in there a year, they're already drying it out just a little bit on that middle as the warmth really kind of picks up. So where it enters kind of soft and really muted, then the alcohol is what actually builds right on that mid palate. And then there's that vanilla kind of lingering from that barrel influence into the finish. Soft, semi-sweet, a little bit of yeast, a little bit of dough right up front. And then it just kind of alcohol picks up, and like I said. Overall, I can see where they're going with it. They're trying to market this more for like mixing in cocktails or serving it on the rocks. You know, I like bourbon, so to me, if I was going to sip either one of these, um, I don't see that as really a sipper. Okay, I'll put it to you like that. So let's go ahead and go over here. I could see mixing that in cocktails though. Splash of Coke would probably definitely help that one. Alright. Much, much softer. Faintly sweet, very nice. It's almost found a really nice balance. Ooh, thunderstorm come moving in. A really nice balance between um, the softness and the sweetness is without being overly sweet at all. That fresh rye grain coming through. Yep, right up there in the front. And then it kind of, kind of, it's like a little mini pop of a floral note kicking in right after that. A subtle hint of honey sweetness kind of lingering onto that finish, so it's flowers, honey, and the yeast is in there as well, that doughiness. It's, this doesn't feel like this one. This one felt more like when I said the yeast, it's felt more like actual just yeast. This one's feeling like a, like a, like a dough, like a really nice fresh dough. That's what's interwoven between all those um, that nice sweet rye and the floral notes with that little bit of honey on top. Overall, it's very, very nice. The only other one that I've ever had similar to this would be Maker's White, which I'm saving to review that one when I do my Kentucky uh, Bourbon Trail video. I really did enjoy that one. This one is very, very similar. And unfortunately, the Maker's White you can only get at the distillery. Jack Daniels you can get pretty much everywhere. So it's going to be really up to you whether you decide it's worth the $40, $50. Uh, as far as white whiskeys go, sorry, as white spirits go, I do thoroughly enjoy that one. Um, if you're looking for a big burn or something like that, then not this one. But if you're looking for a more refined, sipping type clear spirit, uh, then you can definitely go that route. Again, thank you for joining me once again for my spirit review videos. Everybody have a great evening and cheers.